Hello, lovely internet strangers. Now, one of the other things is that lesbianism is really hard to separate from the feminist movement and activist movements in general. Now, when some people say radical feminists, they mean feminists who are radical in the way that they behave. But when I say radical feminists, it's referring to the specific branch of feminism that split off from the Betty Friedan school of feminism in the 60s and historically has had some ties to political lesbianism. That is, we can't have relationships with men. We have to have relationships with women instead, whether or not we are really deep down sexually attracted to them. So there's a large segment of the rad femmes that are either lesbians for political reasons or actually lesbians. And they have a certain view about the oppression of women throughout history and certain experiences that you have being a biological woman, the burdens that you have to bear. And they see trans women trying to step into that space without having come by it honestly, so to speak, that they will never never actually experience the biological aspects of being a woman, so therefore they are not really a woman. They see a man who has chosen to cloak themselves in womanhood and they only really see the benefits of it and they never have to deal with menstruation or childbirth or the sexualization that you face from a young age, etc, etc, etc. Insert other radical feminist talking points here. So I think there are a lot of factors as to why you only see this kind of thing cropping up in women's spaces versus gay male spaces. Now, as for the word queer, God, I hate the word queer. I don't think I could hate the word queer more. I don't remember exactly when I first started seeing the word queer crop up, but I've been on OkCupid since 2014 and I don't really use it actively anymore, but I mostly scroll through there to see like what kind of people are on there and what they're saying in their profiles. And I definitely saw over the past seven years since I've been on the site, slowly and slowly more and more people describing themselves as queer, more and more people saying things like, I'm really looking for queer friends. That's a popular thing to say. And when I first got on OkCupid, I definitely got a sense from looking at the profiles that there was still this divide between lesbians and bisexual women, that lesbians didn't really trust bisexual women like myself because they're afraid that you're going to leave them for a man or they didn't even like the fact that you had been with them man or were currently with a man if you were poly. And that's been a divide for a long time. There was a stereotypical view in the communities that bisexual men were really gay men trying to hold on to their straightness and bisexual women were really straight women who wanted to dabble in lesbianism, but ultimately would go back to a man and never had to face the social stigma of openly identifying as a lesbian and maybe even dressing themselves in a certain way that identify them as such. But over time, I would start to see even the bisexual women saying things like they weren't interested in dating straight men, that if they were going to be involved with men, they had to be bisexual or non-binary or trans or queer. So that's been an interesting shift. But I've had the sense for a long time that the word queer, especially when used by women, is merely a political term more than anything else. That there are plenty of women who have never been with a woman and probably never will be with a woman in any capacity, whether just sex or an actual relationship who identify themselves as queer as a political statement, basically. That it's cool, hip, and progressive to be open to the idea of being with a woman. I was always confused by the term queer because I always thought, okay, you're either a lesbian, as in you're only attracted to women, or you're bisexual and you are attracted to both. And to me, bisexual has always been a thing where you can be on the Kinsey scale somewhere. You don't have to identify that when you're describing yourself as bisexual. Being bisexual can mean that you're mostly attracted to men but find some women attractive. It can be that you mostly find women attractive, but sometimes find men attractive. It can be that you've gone through different phases in your life where you find men more attractive than women. It just means that you are in some capacity attracted to both men and women. So what is queer if we already have the terms lesbian and bisexual, if not a political statement? Because being queer is pretty much synonymous with being an intersectional feminist. I worked with a woman who 
identified herself as queer, even though she had not been with a woman. And I didn't get the sense from her dating stories that there was any kind of near future time when she was going to be involved with a woman. But she was Polly and one of the obnoxious Polly people. She was also an intersectional feminist. And it was just important for her to be like queer and open. The other connotation that queer has is an opposition to heteronormativity. I explained this to a friend of mine when someone he knew was a bridesmaid at a queer wedding and she and the other bridesmaids were wearing tuxes. And I said, yeah, because being queer means queering things. It means making things not straight and normal. It means overthrowing the usual expectations and roles, etc. So generally what people mean when they're describing themselves as queer and they want a queer relationship or the reason that they don't want to date straight men is because they want to avoid the possibility that that person will have traditional expectations, at least as far as I can tell. Talking about non-binary and gender non-conforming, there's also been a steady trend over the years that I've been on OkCupid of people identifying themselves as such because at some point OkCupid added all these options for identifying yourself and I'd see these women who listed themselves as gender non-conforming and I'd look at their photos and be like, you look pretty obviously female to me. Is it in the way you act? Okay. I could describe myself as gender non-conforming because I act masculine of center, but whose standards are we not conforming to? Like who set out the rule book about how women are supposed to act? This varies from place to place and throughout time. We live in one of the most open progressive times ever. If you don't want to conform to whatever expectations you see in society, society or feel people are putting on you, just don't. You're not like some rich girl in the 1800s who needs to find a man because it's not societally acceptable for her to work. Do whatever you want. You can wear pants, you can wear dresses, you can wear a dress over pants, which was a fashion choice when I was in middle school, which was bad and we should never do it again. Whenever I see people with these labels like non-binary, gender non-conforming, or gender queer, God, I hate that one, and queer, I'm like, you really must must care a lot about what other people think about you because it's really important to you to make this statement to people about yourself when nobody really cares and no one is stopping you from being who you are. At most, if you live in some place like some backwards town somewhere, then just move and go live in one of the many places where nobody's gonna give a shit that you like to make out with women or wear cargo shorts and not have kids or or work long hours and have your husband be a stay-at-home dad, whatever. I also have the same frustration as the one expressed by many of the people she talked to for this article that the non-binary ideology rejects the idea that you can just be a woman who is more masculine or you can be a man who is more feminine. Because even though I'm not a radical feminist, they do have a valid point that there are certain biological experiences that you have as a woman that you don't have as a man and vice versa versa. The effects of high testosterone are real and women's biology makes it so that we have hormonal cycles that affect our mood and our energy levels and we can have trouble with our iron levels because of blood loss on a monthly basis. And whether we choose to have children or not, it is something that we have to think a lot about more so than men because one, we have the biological clock that kicks in at a certain point for most women. And also if a pregnancy ends up happening, from sex, we're going to be the ones actually going through the physical changes to create the child, carry the child to term. I'm not going into all the legal and economic ramifications about men's role and child support and all that, but just literally from a biological perspective, if you have a child, it's the woman that goes through that physical change. And if you're a woman who doesn't have children for whatever reason, because you can't or you don't want to, you always have to think about yourself as somewhat different from other women that do have that experience of having biological children. All I'm trying to say is there are very real biological experiences that separate us, but the way that you act, the roles that you fill in your life might correlate, but can vary independently. I think the final point I wanted to make is that while I was never a part of the lesbian community, shall we say, I feel like there's been this concept 
of WLW, Women Loving Women. So bisexual women and lesbians both fit under that umbrella. And I've never really fit into that because I felt like it's the space that like is very affirming of women in general. And I don't really get along with most women that well or connect to them that well. So I never really fit in there. But like I said, with that bar, Henrietta Hudson, as much as it was a place to hook up, it was also a community space where there were these women who had been coming there for years at a time when it wasn't really okay for them to go other places or it wasn't easy for them to find other women who might be interested in them. And my friend who's a lesbian, you know, had hard times like being attracted to women who were straight, at least as far as they could tell and wondering if that woman might be bi or might even be a lesbian and not open about it just like her. And it's really hard to find that out in some way without coming right out with it. And she had at least one bad experience in that respect. Either you just don't go there at all. And so it can be really lonely and isolating, or you do try to make some kind of overture. And women can be really, really harsh about that kind of thing. I think maybe because women tend to be more like emotionally intimate with each other in general and act a certain way with each other that they don't with people that they are like seeing as potential romantic partners, that it feels like a betrayal. Essentially, they talk to other women in a way that they wouldn't with the men that they're romantically interested in. And so once they find out that like one of these women they've been emotionally intimate with in that way has actually been like lusting after them, it freaks them out. And like all of a sudden you're basically like the same as like a dude who was pretending to be their friend and just trying to get with them. Even though that's generally not the situation. We are friends, but I'm also a lesbian and I think you're beautiful and an amazing person. And I'm just wondering if, you know, maybe you're bi and lesbian and maybe you're feeling the same way as me and we're in this like standoff, but then you get like totally rejected and they never trust you again. Lesbian bars are like a safe space where you don't know that every other woman in there is gonna find you attractive and probably they don't, but they're not gonna be offended and make you feel like you're disgusting for expressing attraction toward them. I always like those nights where we went out to the lesbian bars and clubs because they were like these spaces, like there was this vibe there, there was a community and it was cool to experience it. And now I feel like in this modern landscape where everything is just non-binary and queer and we've got trans people and whatever, you just like lose these kind of like spaces for people who have similar experiences. In the old days, there were these lesbian spaces, which were places where biological women who were attracted to women find other friends who had had the same experiences as them of being rejected by female friends who then thought they were gross or having to hide their lesbian identity from people and then also find people that might want to date you. So I'm going to end this babble here or I will just go on forever and forever and nobody wants that. I would love to hear from you guys on this topic, any lesbians, bisexual women, gay men, bi men, throw your comments in there, email me, DM me on Twitter, whatever. If you have any questions, if you disagree with something I said, if I said something horribly offensive, please let me know. We can have a nice little debate about it. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.